Sabotage, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra in my new band, All Terrain. I am blowing it up on Metal Gods Radio. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting Metal Gods Radio interview. And today we have Jeff Plate, drummer Jeff Plate, from uh, his new band, All Terrain, uh, on the phone with us. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, our pleasure. Uh, the new band, how did that band come to be, and how did you settle on All Terrain as a name? Oh, man. So this this whole idea started started years and years ago. I, uh, I lived out in the Boston area in the late 80s, early 90s. I, I was in a band called Wicked Witch. My, my guitar player was named Matt Leff. My singer was none other than Zachary Stevens who we all know from Sabotage, Circle of Circle, Ark and Angel, and, and also with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had a really good run out in, the, out in the New England area in the early 90s, and we had a rehearsal room, which, which I had a fairly primitive recording set up. It was just a soundboard and a reverb unit and a cassette deck. And I literally recorded everything that we had worked on whether it was songs or whether it was just a riff or a jam, I have it on over 20 cassette tapes just full of us playing. And obviously, in 1992, Zach Stevens got the, uh, the call from Sabotage to be their new singer. And in 1994, I got the call to join Sabotage also as, as their new drummer. But as the years went by, I, I kept... Uh, going back to some of these cassettes and listening to some of these ideas that we had really never finished. And several years ago, I was listening to some of these tapes and they were literally starting to deteriorate just because how old they were. I began digitizing these tapes. And as I did this, I realized there was so much good material that was never finished. that was never going to be used. And I approached Matt Leff the guitarist who was initial in writing this stuff about using some of this material. And he gave me his blessing to do so. Um, Matt had also come down with cancer and he was unable to play guitar anymore, but he told me, you know, he was cool with me using some of these ideas. This is where this idea for all terrain began. And some of these old riffs were the, were the building blocks. For a number of these songs on this record, um, I would say 70% of the music, 80% of the music on Mother's Day is all original music. But some of the music that I that I began working with Matt Left 30 years ago is is really where this started. And and ironically, today is Matt's birthday. And you know, unfortunately, cancer caught up with Matt. We lost him at the end of 2019. But. Uh, but I've been able to take some of his music and bring it to life. And with the, with the people that are in my band, a bunch of local players, uh, we really focused on just, just trying to make a great record. And like I said, the impetus for this, the building blocks really began with Matt Left and, and a lot of his guitar work. So happy birthday, Matt. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be here without him. What are you calling the style of music that Arthur Ray plays? <laughs> Oh man, well I think it's it's progressive. It's it's power metal, it's hard rock, it's melodic, it's it's got some you know, real commercial elements to it too. I mean there's a you know, always is, is a very commercial friendly song. Um Immortal is is right in that alley. So is Let's Go. And then you and then you look at songs like Mother's Day in Rise and you know, they, they lean a little bit more to the progressive progressive metal side of things. But, you know, I, I think it really, all in all, it's, it's a metal record, and it's got some progressive slants to it. The vocals are, are very melodic. I think the vocals really are what cuts that all-terrain apart because the vocals are so well done. I mean, Tommy Cook on lead vocals and Colin Holloway on lead vocals along with, with Kevin McCarthy singing back up in Zach Hamilton, vocally, they just sound fantastic and really, really able to do a, a really good job of taking my ideas and my lyrics and bringing them to life and, 
But along with that, you know, the musicians also really just did such a fantastic job. Uh, hearing Tommy Cook on guitar and vocals, Kevin McCarthy on bass and vocals, Colin Holloway on vocals and guitar, and Zach on keyboard, Zach Hamilton, along with Jane and Jeannie, who uh, she has been a keyboardist in the trans Siberian Orchestra for close to 20 years. And Jane came in kind of at the end of the project, but her keyboard work, her her sounds, her you know her approach to this whole thing really, really took all terrain in this music into I think a more progressive direction, but also you know it made it made the band heavier, it made it bigger, and some of her piano work is just beautiful also. So it really covers a lot of a lot of the spectrum here. But you know, all in all, we're a progressive melodic metal band, I, I would say. And from the picture, it looked to me like there may be some varying ages within the group. Does that, yeah. does that sound right? Yes, yes. Uh, Jane and I have been around for a while. So is Kevin. Uh, Tommy Cook is, uh, he's a little bit younger than I am. But uh, Colin and Zach are, are also, they're the youngest members of the band. And, you know, aside from Jane, all the other guys live right here in my hometown. And these, these are people that I've played with over the years. I, I knew how talented they were. So when I started building this project and I brought them in and everybody really started contributing, you know, I knew that they were capable of, of really, really, you know, stepping up on this record and doing a fantastic job. And they, and they did absolutely that. But, uh, but yeah, you know, aside from the, the age difference and musical difference, you know, too, with a lot of us, all the elements just really came together, and, and I think to help us, it helped us really create something that sounds very unique and original. Your album debut, Mother's Day, came out in January. Uh, talk a little bit about the t what the title means to you, as it means different things to different people. So the title of the album was was in my mind for literally 20 years. This this was based off one of these old riffs that I had mentioned, and. For whatever reason, I, I, I had this, this title, I had the riff, I, the content of the song is really about Mother Earth and the fact that we are, you know, uh, Mother Earth is going to get sick of us eventually and maybe that's what this whole virus is about, who knows. But that's what Mother's Day is about. Um, a lot of people weren't quite sure where the, what that song was referring to because the name of the band, All Terrain, Actually, my mother's name is Alta, and I took the meaning of her name, which is which is higher. It means higher and elevated, and you know, kind of researched some other word meanings or name meanings you know, around my name and my sister's name, Terry, and came up with the word rain. So Alta Rain is what the, the the name of the band is, obviously. But my mother's name is Alta. The album is called Mother's Day, and Mother's Day, the song is is about Mother Earth, and that's. That's kind of represented in the artwork, and if you if you read lyrics to the song, I, I think it will make a lot of sense to you. In a way, you're uh, it's uh, sort of an activist, sort of maybe in a roundabout way, right? Yeah, I mean, you could say that. I, I wouldn't really call myself an activist, but but it's just interesting how you you look at climate change and how you look at some of the things that are going on in the world in nature. It's like we we just can't keep abusing this place as much as we are and, and to think that we're going to get away with it. You know, eventually something's going to happen. We, we've seen weather changes like we've never seen before. You know, storms, tornadoes. There's just some really, really intense things happening around the world weather-wise. And it just makes you wonder. It just makes you wonder. But you know, to me, the earth is a living thing and, and, you know, you can't abuse it and poison it forever without it, without it fighting back. Talk about the artwork as it pertains to the songs on the record and who is the artist and who created the logo? So the artist, uh, Zach Evans, as I mentioned, was in a band called Ark and Angel. They released the record last year. The artist that he used is a man named Oleg out of Russia. Uh, Voodoo Dark Art is the name of his company. And I love the artwork on the Archangel record. So I got a hold of Oleg. 
Um, we went over a number of different ideas. You know, obviously Mother's Day being about the earth, that was that was critical in that. But uh, but the fact that I live in a town called Horseheads, New York, uh, my my sister was a huge avid horse lover. She she you know rode horses and showed horses for you know many many years. I wanted to incorporate all this into this artwork, but I also wanted to to have a a female warrior, a heroine, so to speak. And so we just Oleg took a lot of my ideas. You know, we spent a lot of time going back and forth and editing it. But uh, but the end result, I, I am just really thrilled with the way the album cover came out. I, I get some compliments on that, and the fact that the girl is wearing a mask really had nothing to do with COVID at the time. It was, it was more about, I just wanted to be her to be a little more anonymous. You know, I think she looks more like a warrior with the, with the mask. Um, so along with that, uh, Oleg also, you know, began designing the, the lettering for the name. And, you know, this whole process took several months, but he came up with a really, really cool looking logo and, yeah, I'm really, really proud with, with everything that we've created. You know, not not just musically, but I think the artwork is fantastic. Oleg is also going to be working with me on our next record, and uh, and that is something that we are we are in the process of writing right now. You were in sabotage during the '90s, uh, the last decade of uh, fickle sales, pre-streaming, downloading era. Uh, talk a little bit about the pros of now versus the cons of the past. That's an interesting. Question. I, I mean, literally, the, the the whole music industry is flipped upside down. You know, I mean, you don't you don't make a whole lot off of selling records anymore. And and obviously, now that it's just such a digital world, once you release your record, it is out. It's out there for the world, and you hope that your fan base will will buy the product and support you. Um, at the same time it's accessible to everybody all of the time. So there's a positive to that too. I, I also find it interesting that it's like now with, with technology and everybody being able to record at home, I was able to do this record um, for Rat Pack Records. Joe O'Brien uh, is a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. He, he just let me write this record. You know, he did not interfere. He did not suggest anything. He, he really liked what he was hearing, the songs I was sending him and the direction it was going. He let me create this record on my own without, without really any, any input or any interference. So this is something that's much different than years ago when, when the record label, who was dumping a ton of money on a project, you know, would, would have a lot to say about, about the songs and the, and the final product. So I think in this way, it allows the artist to be a little more open, a little more artistic. But, you know, at the same time, it's, it's really difficult to, it's really difficult to, like, when you sell music now, it's, it's almost impossible to really keep track of it. Because, you know, with Spotify, with, with uh, digitized music, with people stealing music and just downloading it, you know, it goes on and on and on. It isn't like in the past when you, you literally had to buy the physical product in order to have the record. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to the whole thing. But, uh. But I, it would be nice to see the artist be able to get a better handle on on some of this. I, I feel the artists have been shortchanged in a lot of ways when it comes to this. What artist has inspired you the most as a drummer? Well, I, probably Neil Peart. I mean, that's Neil. I mean, Kiss. Kiss was the band that really that really you know put me in orbit when I was a teenager. But but Neil Peart came along just as I was becoming a drummer just as I was getting my feet under myself, you know, musically and, and on the drum kit. And, and he really was just such a huge inspiration for, for my whole life, really. I mean, I have always loved Neil Drumming. I love his lyrics. Um, I, lo I love the way that, that he and the band Rush have handled themselves over all of these years. So, but you know what? There are so many fantastic drummers out there that are, you know, everybody has their own style. You know, Mike Portnoy, Mike Mangini, Thomas Lang, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Steve Smith, Tommy Aldridge, young and old. There's so many great players out there now, but 
But I, I just, I think back to when I was young and Neil Pert was the guy that really was leading the way for me. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. We'll look forward to uh, maybe you hitting the road at some point with uh, any of your bands. Uh, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with anybody that might be listening to this? Well, I just want to thank you and everybody for, for supporting El Terrain and, and giving my music a chance. I'm very proud of this record. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to making the second record. And, you know, hopefully this is something that we can, that we can really push and develop. I, I, I can't wait for the day when things are somewhat normal and we can start the tour again. I think El Terrain is going to be a fantastic live act. And if everything goes right, hey, you never know. We could be uh, we could be in California, hopefully, sometime next year.